So I was out for a ride and the battery turned off halfway through the ride. And I shouldn't say the battery, the screen turned off and the motor turned off halfway through the ride. So that means you could have a problem with the motor, the controller or the battery, but it's almost always the battery. Um, now the voltage was showing at about 49 volts, which on a 48 volt battery is plenty of voltage, but it kept turning off and I could unplug it and it would come back on, but it would, and as soon as I started pedaling, it would turn back off again. That means probably the BMS is kicking in and disabling the battery. And it probably means we have one single bad cell that is causing the BMS to kill the battery. Um, the reason I know that is the BMS shouldn't kick in when the overall battery voltage is 49 volts, except if one cell is um, at three volts or below, then the BMS will kick in. So we need to pull this off and we need to inspect the battery and see what's going on. Okay, let's uh, open this up. I just pulled out the screws. Let's lift this off. Haven't tested anything yet. Um, let's see what's going on here. Okay, let's tilt this over like this and carefully lift out the battery. The battery is warm. Let's do a quick visual inspection of the battery. Everything on that side looks okay. Uh, everything on this side looks okay. All right, let's plug in the battery management here and see what we can see. And I think I have an extension cable. I think I built an extension cable. Yes. Here's, a, here's an extension harness I built because this is uh, this cable is pretty small. I can't remember. Is this the right size? I can't recall. All right, let's try unplug this. And I think I used a little hot glue on this. So. Okay, there we go. It's out. Let's see. Is this the right pin pitch? Yes, this looks about right. Okay. That's on there, then this should go in here with your battery negative here. And let's see what it says. Oh, I already see the problem. Let's put this on properly here. These pins are a little fiddly to get on, but don't force it because you don't want to bend these pins. Okay, there it's on. Do you see? Group number eight is 2.9 volts. So there is a bad selling group number eight and number group one also has a slightly bum cell. Um, but the rest, see the rest are all perfect at 4.0. So I really should try and find the bum cell in number eight, but first I got to figure out what is number eight. So I guess let me uh, poke around and see if I can figure out which is number eight and then I'll decide if I'm just going to rebalance this or if I'm actually going to try and do some repairs to cell eight. Hmm, I got to think. All right, let's, uh, let's do some testing and I'll be back. Okay, it is this set of four here. One, two, three, and four. These are the ones producing a 2.9. Um, let me get it. Get the battery on here. Yeah, this is your two. This is your two point nine. So these four are our sus batteries here. Now, I can pull out these batteries. You know, I can clip the plastic leads and I can remove the battery. This is possible. But then I got to figure out which is the bad cell, and all of these cells are going to be at two point nine because the bad one has dragged the other ones down with it. So I'm going to need a way to then decide which one needs to be replaced. I could replace all four. Um, you know, I could go find four cells off my shelf that are, that are stable voltages above four volts and replace them. Or maybe I'll put them in. I've got a tester, a battery tester. Maybe I'll load them in the tester and see if one has super high internal resistance. That would probably be the scientific way to do it. So maybe that's what we'll do. All right, let me uh, get my tools ready and let's extract these cells and go from here.
Okay, I have disconnected the four cells. I'm gonna snip these little plastic tabs holding them in place and I'll be able to slide out the four bad cells and then we'll do some testing on the four cells and either replace them all or, uh, um, or you know, or we'll put them on the battery tester and see if one is particularly high internal resistance and then we'll just replace that one. All right, let's get some snips. All right, I ran them through my two testers here, and I'll be honest, I can't seem to get consistent, um, consistent uh, readings on the internal resistance of these cells. Um, you know, sometimes they read high, sometimes they read low. I don't know, I'm not super happy with the, uh, with the uh, readings here that I'm getting from these, from these cells. So I am tempted to just replace all four. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to do just for speed of getting the battery back up and operational. I think I'm going to grab four fresh ones, four that have been sitting on, on the shelf for a year and still have over four volts. That means they don't have high internal resistance. They're not burning internal resistance. So I'm going to go grab four freshies and let's see what happens. Okay, I grabbed four fresh ones off the shelf. Let's test them quick. You can see the multimeter in the corner here. 4.056, 4.055, 4.066, and 4.60. So these cells are all very nicely matched and they're gonna go back into the pack. Okay, the four fresh ones are slipped in and uh, I need to just reconnect the, the, the spot welds and uh, put the balance bleed back on and then this should be restored. Then we're going to have to do a deep balance overall because, you know, the other batteries aren't fully charged. So, so anyways, let's, let's get this all reconnected and then we'll talk about balancing the battery. Okay, I've re-spot welded this side. Let's flip it over, finish the other side. Be very careful when you're sort of repairing a battery like this. You've got to make notes about, you know, which salt which you need to reconnect and what you don't want to reconnect so i've got an, an arrow here saying that this needs to reconnect to here and this says no because i don't want to reconnect to that because this group connects to this group but not to this group we'll get a short circuit if these touch so you know just got to be careful with where you're putting your um your spot welds and that to rebuild the battery but we know that we need a piece of um we know that we need a piece that goes from here to about here. So we'll cut that like that. And we will spot weld this in here like this. And we'll have to join this, this over here, but it'll be fine. And let's... Uh... Now, because I cut those tabs, these cells want to droop down a little bit. So... I should put something under here just to push up a little bit on these cell groups. Let me see what I can put under there. Okay, it's not pretty, but this battery is electrically connected once again. Um, so I need to attach this balance lead here where the old uh, balance lead attached. I'll put a blob of solder there right now. And then, uh, I mean, technically then we can uh, recheck the battery and see what it says. All right, quick and dirty, but that balance lead is attached. Now, if let me bring you over here, you can see cell four is 4.06, perfect. So it's now cell one that's 3.6. So there is kind of a dud cell in cell one, but I don't know if I care enough to replace it as well. I'd have to replace all four cells in cell one group as well. And 
cell one group also means removing the main master, negative or positive. It's a bit more of a bit more of a pain. Don't know if I care enough. What I might just I, I'm going to hook up my balancer and just rebalance this battery, and I'll just know that group one has a slightly dud cell, but you know we'll need regular balancing, and so be it. Um, I think that's good enough for now. So I'm going to replace these cells too. I've decided to fix battery four as well, and. You know, I soldered the ne main negative directly on the battery, and I think I'm regretting that. That was that's a big lead, and that was probably a lot of heat. That probably didn't didn't uh, do the battery any any favors, and probably maybe why this cell is acting. You know, one of these cells is acting out, but it's probably going to be the one with that I soldered on. I think when I replace this, I'm going to solder onto the onto the uh, nickel directly, um, rather than onto the cell directly, and and hopefully not put so much heat into the battery. Anyways, let's grab four new ones and replace these. Okay, battery reassembled. Not the fanciest thing I've ever done, but it is done and I haven't shorted anything, which is, a, which is a win. And if we look here, it says the battery is good. And now all the batteries are very, very close. Now I might plug in my, my extra balancer right here just for a second, but this battery is reassembled all with good cells and I've tried not to put too much heat into any one cell to melt it. So let's see if the battery performs better now. All right, I have the balancer hooked up. The battery is coming in line. You can see the status of the battery is good. Um, so I'll let this run for probably take 30 minutes because these are super close already. And uh, then the battery can go back in service, you know, I build these batteries with used cells. And so, you know, sometimes these cells uh, die, sometimes they start to have high internal resistance. And that's just part of the, part of the fact of using used cells. Um, you gotta watch your maintenance and you gotta have good BMSs that can shut down the battery when it starts to act badly, which mine did. And then you gotta be prepared to rebuild it when the time comes, which is uh, what's happened. So anyways, batteries repaired and back in service.